Good evening and welcome to the Reston Community Center Board of Governors meeting for May. We'll now call the meeting to order. First order of business is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. So moved and second. All those in favor? Those opposed? Next order of business is approval of the April 5th board minutes. So moved. Um, no, I would like to make a comment about the board minutes. Um, I just, you know, I'm mindful of the fact that these are publicly available minutes, and I know that our opening discussions are often um, more friendly and, and information sharing. I would like in this, this my, the paragraph about me, so it's at the bottom of page two, I would like to add a sentence. Uh, due to ongoing health concerns, Laurie felt she could not safely return to in-person meetings until she and her husband had been vaccinated. I was not missing meetings because I'm busy with my law practice. We're all busy people. But with my husband's serious health concerns, it was until he and I had both been vaccinated that I was not willing to come to in-person meetings. So I, if I could add that to the minutes. Sure. That's the only suggestion yeah. I'm making. Yeah, I don't think that sentence was intended to say you weren't. I understand, no, you know, I understand. But I, you know, we're all busy people. Sure. And it was a very specific health concern that kept me away from the in-person meetings. That's the only change I would like to suggest. Sure. If you have that written, if you'll just send it to Karen. Sure. Okay. Yeah, just, okay, send Thank me. you. Anything else? I move the minutes be accepted as a minute. Sorry. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Next order of business is approval of the April 5th board actions. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Next order of business is the chair's remarks. You may remember her. <laughs> um, I, would, the, um, I, I, I just want to say again that the strategic planning session that we had was excellent. That was just amazing. I am always moved and, and changed, I guess, and, and saying, wow, wow, I'm involved with this group of very committed, intelligent, caring people. It was a, it was a wonderful session. I enjoyed it a lot. <clears throat> and th to say that to you, you know all the, our strategic plan meetings are open to the public. You should come and join us sometime. Um, <clears throat> tonight, this is uh, Walter Wintel, someone I didn't know before. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you, if, if you, think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win but think you can't, it is almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out of the world we find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you are outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can even win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but soon or late, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. And that's, I, I think that's something for us to think about as we go into this one Fairfax to us. We have to believe that that is a reality. Next order of business is introduction of our visitors. We have none. So there will be no citizen input tonight. Next order of business is the committee reports from the strategic planning sessions. Ms. Boyd? Oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we had the uh, the long range planning, strategic planning session on the 23rd to 24th. The first day was basically devoted to going over all of the financial details and the, the good news was that we are probably going to return about a million dollars after all was said and done to the reserve balance, which is absolutely great. And uh, a robust discussion was, was held about uh, things that are going to be moving forward in terms of some of the capital projects that we're doing and how do we also fit all of this into to one Fairfax. And then on Saturday, the, the entire Saturday exercise was really reg regulated around, relegated around putting together the initial strategic plan that we are due to put our strategic plan together and we are a couple of months behind. So a lot of deep dive and due diligence was done on Saturday. Um, our new uh, pillars were discovered. And I can't do it justice, but it's all out of um, in here. Uh, there was a robust discussion about community engagement and how we're going to get this thing done and ratified by October. And uh, Karen Cleveland did a, an absolutely marvelous job of corralling the herd <laughs> of uh, staff and board members that day, and we got done on time. So uh, the next thing to come up will be uh, to affirm the uh, RCC mission, a uh, vision, mission and value statements, and to accept the strategic plan. So we are moving forward with that. Two days of meetings, six hours of hard work, work complete. Will you present those uh, five motions, Bill? That sure. At the end of so we can. Do the that thing now? that accreditation tells us we have to formally do is. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. So the first motion is to affirm the RCC vision, mission, and value statement following review by the Long Range Planning Committee on April 23rd, 2021. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Yes, Does that mean all of the, um, the objective statements that we... Everything that we came up with. No, no. The first motion is yeah. about the review. You, you review. review the vision, mission, and values at the front end mm -hmm. on Friday. Right. And then as a function of formally acknowledging that you reviewed it, and you, in that meeting on Friday, everybody agreed this is still our vision, still our mission, still our values. So we are just formally putting that in the form of a motion so there is a dated record of the board having reviewed and approved that, not just the document of the committee report. Okay, because I, I had a comment on the um, five pillars. That That's not the that motion. That's not the three. This yeah. motion is just for our current vision, mission, and values. No problem. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay. Second motion is to accept the strategic plan update findings for the calendar year 2020 presented in the strategic planning sessions to the Long Range Planning Committee on April 23rd and 24th, 2021. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. And Lori, do you want to abstain from these? I would like to abstain from these. I, I apologize that I was okay. unable to participate. All right, third motion to direct staff to continue preparation of the FY 2022 carryover package in concert with returning to RCC's core profiles of building operations programs and services budget results will be monitored by the board and staff to assure adequate resources. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion Four, to direct staff to prepare the FY23 budget outline consistent with the RCC core programs and services, capital project and maintenance requirements, careful consideration of the RCC resources. Uh, you still have to read there. Huh? Turn the page. 
and preservation of that. Yeah. I don't have it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And preservation matter the reserves for inclusion in the June public uh, hearing for programs and budget. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. The motion carries. And fifth, to proceed with the community engagement calendar and activities sufficient to enable development of a new strategic plan 2021 through 2026. The present board may adopt in October 2021. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion. Thank you. Trying to keep our accreditation <laughs> on, on track. <laughs> on track. On track. That's right. Now you're on session both Friday and Saturday. Um, I finished up my Ollie course on history of California. It seemed to have gone very well. And uh, started preparing for some new Ollie courses. Um, I've talked about five and thinking of another one um, about four corners Indians, the particular novel of Pueblo and so um, it's interesting. It's my primary uh, use of time uh, studying these things, and, and I like that. I too attended the uh, strategic planning session. I learned a lot this year. Uh, I know each year I can learn a little bit more about the financial aspect of it, not being a financial person. It's always good to learn more. Um, I've also been doing a lot of just work online and. In, in person, but mostly virtually, uh, equity work in the county, learning stuff and also learning about organizations, national organizations, what they've done to uh, address race and equity in society. So that's, uh, that's been my life work for a long time, but right now it's just very current. And so paying attention to the structural things and how you change them by being active. So that, that takes a lot of time. And it is um, uh, not, not weird, it's a it's uh, it's fascinating. It's engaging, but it it, it it takes its toll. But it's still worth it. Like I, I stand on the shoulder of people that were before me, and I know I'm very proud of you doing this. I love what we do here at RCC. Uh, lead the way. This equity manager is so crucial. So I do speak a lot, trying to invite people now that people open it more, come to some of the the um, series that we have here and get engaged a little more, so they understand. Uh, see, uh, Equity Matters, Just Mercy film uh, uh, showing. Um, the uh, Human Services Council. Uh, the second day of the strategic planning session, I missed the first day because of my niece's wedding. That was the first wedding of that generation of my family. So that was, uh, that's the niece lives with us. Um, uh, and the uh, Salt Lake's PTSA. Uh, just a quick update from uh, the schools. Um, uh, prom now with the governor's uh, um, raising limits on uh, con 
congregation of people. Uh, prom will be still be outdoors and still be in shifts, but instead of being three shifts of one hour each, it will be two shifts of one and a half hours each. Yay! Um, so, so we'll see how many. Uh, I can hear uh, it from my house. And, I, and so, so we'll we'll see how how much uh, uh, noise and revelry is keeping Karen up at night. Um, I am optimistic that Karen will get a good night's sleep. <laughs> uh, I'm going to text you. Uh, and, I, and I think I may have mentioned this last time, but uh, graduation will be at Woodson High School at like nine in the morning. Uh, they're doing like four locations around the county based on like the size of the stadiums. So Woodson is like the closest big stadium to us. And so that's one of the uh, uh, congregation points of that APL and I forget the other two. Um, Some schools are going to Jiffy Lube Live also <laughs> paying. Some Fairfax County schools are. Fairfax County schools schools are. Langley are. is. Langley's going out there. Wow. For their graduation ceremonies? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad they're doing them. So, so they're so they're, yeah. they're doing them outdoors. Yeah. They're still sort of figuring out some logistics, but they're going to do they're going to do something. Uh, online grad party will not be a thing this year. Um, uh, but that's kind of the biggest stuff. You can't from in outdoors, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I guess there's something else that I was. Um, oh, actually, and they, and they and they are still figuring out the whole. Um, uh, instructional model for the fall yeah. uh, based on communications I've had actually just today from the school board member. Um, I don't believe that concurrent uh, uh, instruction will be a thing. Um, I think they're going to, the, the only instances of that unfortunately will affect um, someone I care about uh, because we're related by, by marriage. Um, <laughs> the only exception being for people who need a special <coughs> course for like an IB diploma they might do some concurrent instructions for that, and my wife being DSS in South Lake, that's gonna affect her life. But aside from that, there'll be almost no um, concurrent instruction, and that's a um, good thing. That's uh, a big, big what, what is the, It's a huge, huge thing. With the numbers going the way they are in Fairfax County, if things keep going, why, why, why not? What, what, numbers? what numbers? The numbers of COVID, new COVID cases, hmm and the percentage vaccinations, yeah. like new yeah. COVID cases going down, vaccinations yeah. going yeah. down. By the fall, I don't see why kids couldn't get back in the classroom. Um, so first of all, some uh, students have um, uh, various uh, issues that a doctor will sign a letter for saying that they should not be going back into a classroom. Perhaps they are significantly immunocompromised or they have other things going on in their lives but for whatever uh, reason there is, uh, if a doctor signs a letter saying this person should not be going back to school, then the county will say, okay, then you get to go virtual. Yeah. So I cannot chime in on the, uh, what I think of the validity of all of those doctor statements, um, but there you go. So yeah, I, I, I don't see why, why they wouldn't, but I, I, I'm sure there are exceptions. But, and has there been any kind of decision made about, about the fall. In yes. other words, everybody will go back in the classroom unless they have this exception from a doctor. Uh, I think the, the final vote on that is still to come. They have a, um, uh, a board work session tomorrow uh, discussing some more of the stuff. And then I think they'll be voting on Thursday. Yeah. Um, well, so Thursday. I, 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 I feel confident that they're gonna be voting on, I think it's Thursday. On, on that to actually set the uh, definitive line. Okay. I think that's it for me. Okay. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Equity matters. I'm getting uh, my eyeballs are rolling behind my head from all of these executive searches. So we did hire a new executive director for public art resting. Um, we have gone through. Who the guy? Her name is uh, Trinity Villanueva. She's um, Hawaiian and Hispanic and has worked in uh, one of the DC charter schools to advance um, student fluency in the arts in that school setting. Carlos Rosario, I think, is the yeah. name of the school. Um, she has a, a, a background as a performing artist. She has 
visual art? Visual artist um, credentials. She's uh, very energetic and very excited about um, engaging with this community. Her, uh, her son had a period of time where he, his father lived here, and so he was playing soccer here, and so she's a little familiar with Reston from that, from a parent perspective. Um, but she's delightful and very energetic and has really great ideas for moving public art forward and, and particularly using public art as a way to engage with communities of color and, uh, and people whose exposure to the arts is limited by their circumstances. So very exciting hire. Excellent. She will leave a mark. Yeah. Awesome. She's a firecracker. And then going through, uh, we've gone through about 100 resumes for the new director of Department of Public Works and Environmental Services. And we started initial interviews last week, and we've got a full day of interviews on Wednesday. I can't wait. <laughs> back to back to back to back to back. And then we've gone through about 100 resumes for the Park Authority director, and we're going to cut the short list to about a dozen to further go through tomorrow. And uh, outside of that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds exhausting. You pay me as, twice as much as I got left. Sweet deal. Sweet deal. Okay, and I did, well, is uh, it me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I apologize that I was not able to attend the strategic planning session. My 87-year-old father in Atlanta. We've never had a gathering like this in decades. That you know, all that extended family and professional friends gathered in Atlanta to, for my father's soon because vaccinations had just become available. So it was the first opportunity that that was possible. So I apologize for missing that. Um, I was able to participate in a community meeting um, just yesterday. NAACP called a hastily assembled but well attended meeting to express concerns that perhaps the selection of the Fairfax County Police Chief was not in keeping with the one Fairfax process, was not transparent. Unlike the 2013 process, there was not community engagement in designing the survey that went out in interviewing candidates. Um, their input has been very limited and, and so finding the right way to raise those objections and, and deal with them as a community is, I think, an important issue that draws on the same equity themes we discussed here today. Yeah, they were asking um, on our justice of the peace to a church, people were asking months ago, yeah. how do we get to find out about this team before he's hired? You know, whether it's exactly. Happened. It's going to be a real interesting discussion. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Uh -huh. Because the Board of Supervisors has got a whole other idea about what occurred, and Rodney Lust led that effort. So that's yeah. going to be very. Well, it's very a amazing. conversation that has to happen. It is? Yeah. yeah.
next order of business is the executive director's report. Okay, uh, so just briefly, um, uh, and, I, and after I finish highlights here, we can talk about the draft uh, questionnaire. I promised we would bring a draft of that to you tonight for your feedback and input. Um, we have yet another new training that we have to foist upon the staff uh, with respect to COVID-19. And this one is to um, uh, address the issues of heat exhaustion. Uh, something must have happened somewhere hmm. in Virginia that made heat exhaustion a paramount concern. So now we have a training unit to work on. Um, tomorrow we will be hearing the two finalists for the website uh, redesign and we will select a vendor at the end of the day tomorrow to negotiate with and, and embark on that project. Um, Thursday we have a full project team meeting for evaluation of where we are on the punch list for the aquatics renovation project. We know there are going to be a couple of uh, issues that we'll have to tackle during our annual maintenance period, um, but nothing insurmountable. Um, we're in the process of hiring lifeguards and instructors for the summer aquatic season, as well as, of course, summer camps. Um, we, uh, in April, for the virtual Founders Day of 2021, PD and uh, Kevin headed up the efforts to um, create 21 videos featuring many of the counties and communities leaders and public artworks throughout the community. There were two very popular April exhibits in our gallery spaces, and we're in the process of hiring a new uh, full-time community outreach assistant to support all the um, summer event cycle and uh, year-round off-site events. Um, in uh, Leisure and Learning on the day we were all over there planning um, over here in front of our building, we had some 60 participants in a green Reston event that Natasha created that was really terrific, really sweet, very successful event. They made Play-Doh and listened to a storyteller talk, uh, tell, tell about the earth and rejuvenating the earth and um, they created some seedling planting things. It was very adorable. Um, Latan just uh, discussing reigniting that right before the pandemic, we had some offsite joint uh, programming with the Y where we were providing content and they were hosting it. Uh, so we'll reconnect and re reignite that. The Opportunity Neighborhood Equity Task Force is looking at creating a virtual job fair for the summer in that um, context. Uh, we have this Monday Fun Day program in the community room for Mondays are early days during this particularly strange school year. And so there are anywhere from three to six kids every Monday here who get to socialize and play games in safe format. and. Um, We've gotten positive feedback about that. We have one parent who expressed that it really saved her child's social life to have this outlet. But um, only three to six children participated each week? Each week, yeah. Um, and then uh, we continue to see more uh, participation in virtual programming for the lifelong learning, the older than 55 population, but there are some in-person experiences uh, with um, in-person uh, people attending, and we're hopeful that by fall um, that, will, that will pick up. So uh, we put together this draft. It, it's, uh, it reflects um, the discussions we had. It's, it's this sheet of paper here. It's in the Long Range Planning Report. Um, the handouts. Yeah. It's in the, what? The handouts tab. Yes, the handouts. Okay. Um, and, uh, and we basically um, reiterated the plan pillars that we came up with at the uh, sessions and the strategic themes that we, um, that we will be 
uh, flying to what our objectives are once we create our objectives. Um, there's a little summary statement here about what we have already done um, and then what's next and then the, the uh, uh, questions. And if you recall, we talked about um, perhaps a question not needing, not needing to address the uh, internal capacity issues around uh, stewardship and accreditation, but to really focus on the community um, uh, issues in terms of the, uh, the query to put to um, participants. And we had also talked about these being open-ended questions, not multiple choice, so that we could really get sort of what top of mind impressions people had. Um, uh, Karen Cleveland, I, I ran these past her to make sure that we were on track with sort of what the discussion was on the 23rd and 24th. And she said you might consider having a sixth question that would help wrap up the thought process for the person engaged with the survey to say, when you think about RCC, what comes to mind? or something like that, that that captures a sort of overall impression. But I wanted to get your input and feedback. I also had an um, email exchange with Kara um, uh, from the University of Virginia, because if you recall, we were going to, in, in uh, March of 2020, uh, seems so long ago, uh, we were going to have UVA come and do a presentation on the methodology of the survey. Um, so I just reached out to her to make sure she's still there. <laughs> and, um, and I will be talking with her uh, this week about just, I sort of feel like we need to get uh, some of these sort of um, high level impressions first to, to see if we're, we're we pick up on anything having shifted and then if if that has uh, if that surfaces in the exercise of pushing out the, the survey to the groups that uh, we talked about um, then bringing into that the idea of that public meeting in July where we invite people and then in person to an event having uh, some component of that event around the presentation of what the 2019 survey results were, what the methodology, why it's reliable, and uh, and then you know look at some of what the survey results are from this, as well as from uh, some focus group kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, three things. Uh, first of all, I like Karen's idea for a sixth question. Mm -hmm. um, Second of all, in the questions paragraph, I would actually cut the last two sentences and I would take the last sentence that starts with respect to and reword it and put it at the end of what's next. I think when you have the questions, that first sentence leads very nicely into the five, now six questions. And the idea of stewardship and accreditation, that, to me, that's part of yeah, what's next. And so I would just, Right. It, it interrupts the flow for me. So if we put that, that make a stewardship and accreditation uh, sentence at the end of what's next, I don't think we need to say these are open-ended because they are clearly open-ended. Um, add in the, the sixth thing. So that, that's, the, so that's mm -hmm. my second point. And my third point are the strategic themes. Instead of assuring accountability, should that be ensuring accountability? I will leave that to the board people. I'm, I'm a math teacher. Someone else has <laughs> figure that out. I think if ensuring sounds better to me, but that's probably because I'm a math teacher. Uh, which sounds better to you, uh, or N? E N. E N. Yeah, I'm sorry, where is that particular sentence? It's the strategic themes. Yeah. The third or strategic theme. The third theme. strategic theme. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I, I mean, my, uh, my limited English. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, yeah. uh, I, think, I think they mean the same thing. There's alliteration with your jinx. But I have no problem with either one. If ensuring makes makes people more comfortable, if it feels stronger. Um, I, I don't think there's a sub substantive difference between the, the two. Ensuring is, is something that 
possibly we can't do. In other words, we can't assure there will be a com uh, accountability, but we can in, we we can work towards it. Meaning. <laughs> so, first three no, letters no. of that word tells you a little bit something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll look it up. I will look it up. Because, uh, yeah. so I, 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 what I am reading currently implies that EN would be better. Okay. But if you find something to the contrary, then. No, no. If EN is better, I'm happy to use EN. It doesn't. It's not the hill I would die on. <laughs> Likewise. Let me assure you, I would not die on. I will ensure that I will live to fight over it. Uh, I have something I wanted to bring up anyway, and that's on the pillars. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to include the word inclusiveness with equity. Uh, and actually, I thought of this before, but this uh, video kind of um, made it clear. Right? Inclusiveness is not the same thing as equity. And Inclusiveness is something that we are more likely to be able to do. Equity is such a big topic, as this video showed, and we can only try to move in that direction a bit. But inclusiveness is something we can we can definitely improve on. Can, can we make it inclusion so that it flows with connection and accreditation so there's a... Inclusion of... Inclusion. Okay. Okay. Sure. But I think that it, it should be it should be part of equity. Right. And it's not the same thing as... Well, there, there are there are underneath... Well, I, you could also you could change it to diversity equity, inclusion, and accessibility, those are sort of the, the, um, the, 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 the categories of thought around equity practice. Yeah, but that kind of strings it out and makes it too long. Uh, the two <laughs> most important words are equity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. So, do you have thoughts, Lisa? I think we should leave it at equity. We had a long discussion. Oh, yeah. I did. I did. I did. I think inclusion is very, very important. And I, I believe that wrestling is an inclusive community. It's a step to it. Right, right, it is. It's, yeah. And sometimes they call, people call it DEI, and we see really people in the work, we should switch it to DIE, like die, because the hard, the hard part is, <laughs> the hard part is the equity part. It's, yeah. That is yeah, that's really, the pillar. That's, that, right, that's, that's right. the pillar. And the other part is, oh, okay, we're inclusive, but yeah, inclusive, like everyone gets to be there. We know that. Wrestling already does that better than most of the cities yeah, or sure. places. But equity is really making that fairness that needs to be that's not there. So, yeah. But uh, that's why it's different than inclusion. And the, the point, I guess, that I want to make is what, what RCC is capable of, of doing. And I'm not sure I agree with you that Reston is so inclusive. Uh, Reston is, very, is reasonably diverse, although I don't think it's as diverse as the rest of Fairfax County. But it is not integrated. So many activities seem to have the same group group of people, whether maybe it's a lot of activity or it's something that we do where you see the vast predominance of white faces. Um, I don't think the Latin, the Latin community is not as integrated in terms of our activities. And we should work to, to include people. I don't think we exclude people deliberately, but like equity and racism, there is a result that may, is not deliberately intended, but a result which is not inclusive. It seems to me that, and, and that's something we can work on so and achieve something equity. more than equity itself, which involves the broader aspects of racism. I'm going to disagree with some of what you're saying. Now. Only we can have this in a different thing, but I'm going to invite just a couple of workshops I do. So again, I think you're mixing up the words a little bit. 
we spend a lot of time on Saturday. Yeah, I was going to say. The equity, you need to understand equity. The equity is a part that is the active part of change. Yeah. And they've done it for, they've been talking about you know, one Fairfax for six plus years. And you, we got a piece of it right there. But the equity part is the hard part. Where are you doing? The equity matters that we're doing here. It, you're making the structural changes to add fairness. And the things you attend may not be that diverse, but there are other things that happen in Reston that are diverse because there's equitable changes being made in the way that programs are presented. Equitable changes in how people are able to access that. And so, inclusion is a means to achieving achieving equity, equity. but it's not it's not the end result. And mostly, and since this you know, was we also referred to community connections, and in community connections, implicit in that is inclusion of all neighborhoods. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's covered. I thought it was better to make it explicit. But that was, you know, if that's what people think. Well, and, and from the presentation, the part of inclusion that was being highlighted there was the idea of having a voice that, that matters and that that's sort of a, an important way of thinking about inclusion. And I think the the makeup of this board, the makeup of other sort of groups that matter within Reston, that's where inclusion, that, that's part of where inclusion happens and not necessarily every aggregation of people at a particular program. It's, I think, I think yeah, there's a, no, I, it's broader and it's yeah, also. I, I'm important. thinking of it in a smaller way. Um, uh -huh. So could I suggest Dick, that maybe we leave it the way that it was determined at the at the end of the yeah. meetings in April, and then let's see what it surfaces through the engagement processes. This is not the final plan, yeah. Yeah. and if it turns out that people describe or or uh, suggest issues that aren't showing up yet in terms of what we think are the right pillars or the right um, strategic themes, we can we can adjust and, and shift. And, and just to be clear, the question as written that corresponds to that includes the word inclusion. So we yeah. should help to tease that out if that's something that we feel is uh, that the um, uh, mm -hmm. Population thinks is a missing. That's true. No, yeah. Because it's called out to the corresponding question. Look, yeah. your word isn't in there. I, inclusive. I'm sorry, it's got inclusive. Inclusive is it. Inclusive. It's, inclusive. 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 it's a different. Yeah. And you had said inclusive so it's the same word. at first. Yeah. Okay. I think these are good questions. And I do too. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I agree on adding the sixth yeah. question. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. And what I'll do is uh, uh, do, a, do a second draft. I'll throw the sixth question on there and just share it with all of you and then we'll move forward on developing the instrument and the plan for deployment. Um, I saw in a survey I took today with uh, that was put out by the Opportunity Neighborhood um, uh, program facilitators for the Reston program that uh, SurveyMonkey has the ability to do uh, for, a, for a person to select English or Spanish in, in taking the survey. So I'll look at some alternate language um, capabilities for this as well. Great. Do you know, does SurveyMonkey do a what kind of translation is it? Is it like a Google I don't translate? Know. I yeah. just saw it today, so I, I hadn't seen it before, and I was surprised. So yeah. I will check it out. Is it a clumsy translation? Yeah, no, would believe be something me. Something we could be embarrassed we, by. Yeah, right. We before we put any translated material out, we run it past native speakers yes, to please. be sure that because. Uh, idioms have a strange way of yes, you know, yes. bouncing back in your face. Uh, Oops. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Okay. Is there any old business? Any new business? New business is just notice the events down at yeah, the bottom so. and adding the May 16th, which will be a panel. Three of them. Maybe, yeah, basically. Yeah.
Move to adjourn. Second. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> One of these times I'm going to just... We're going to adjourn.